get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, 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 win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. What up, guys? Welcome to episode 11 of Road to Worlds. We are now week two after the meet. We have no time to waste. We had an incredibly good meet. Last week, we immediately came back in with a kind of like a semi deload week, but not really. Volume's already high. Load and intensity is at the moderate level, but this week we're already starting to scale up because from this point, we only have about 11, 12 weeks before we have to crush at nationals. And remember, to get to Worlds, what do we need? We need first place. Doesn't matter if we get third, doesn't matter if we get second, doesn't matter if we break the current American record, we need to get first place. So now it's all cards on the table. We're gonna push freaking hard. So today we got a, uh, the heaviest bench and the heaviest deadlift day of the week. Hopefully I get some good numbers and we'll continue to push from here. block back week two of the first block we got ranges so if i'm feeling not so good hit 295 if i'm feeling incredible hit 315 but the ultimate bible rule that we cannot break is it cannot be passed an rpe7 last week i hit 295 at rp6 so in my heart of hearts i would love to smash 315 but we got to stick to the program and make sure we don't overreach. So that's why I try to do everything I can to warm up, get my body feeling good so that the weights start snapping into place and I don't have to force it. 135 felt really good. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. I said it. Now it's going to get ruined. All because your fault. Because you were right there going, dude, just tell me, just tell me. Come on, I won't tell anybody. I'm like, ah, fine. And look what happened. So if you don't make it to Worlds, we know the exact moment where it happened is your fault, okay? How about that? I don't want to cheeks it, so I'm not going to say it, but that moved really good. So I said it. Chance number two. If I don't make it to Worlds, it's your fault again because you keep asking me. <laughs> okay. This is the most important warm-up because right before, this is going to dictate what I take for my top set. So I'm going to treat this as if it's 315 because I really, 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 really want to hit 315. too much lotion in my hands so it felt slippery that's why it's good to record so I can make an accurate call let's see let's see oh shit I might go for it might go for it. Looks good. Might go for it, okay? World record, guys. World record. You don't know how happy I am. If you guys have been following this channel for like the past 10 years, then you know. There's a point in time I used to hit 315, 47, 8, 
benching 390, 380 in competition, 390 in the gym. And I don't know what happened, fucking low T or whatever the fuck. Haven't been able to hit 315 on a consistent basis. And I think I'm back. Even though it's just one, it makes me feel good that I can, it's even within my range, you know? So, please, please let me hit this good with no injuries. I need to find some chalk too. Can't be dealing with no fucking slippery ass hands. All right, this is what we came to do. What do I do about my slippery ass succulent hands? I see a chalk bowl over there. Put on some chalk. Get rid of my succulent, well lubricated, wet hands. Get a good grip on this, you know what I'm saying? Three fifteen, we meet again. If I fail, Justin, please save my life. <laughs> Woo! Even with the slippery bench, we got it. So see, even though you guys try to jinx me, I know what y'all haters trying to do. You can't hold the low T down, baby. Low T kings, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, what do I got next? That was kind of scary though, to be honest. <laughs> I was slipping around. That bench is slippery as fuck. Okay. One by tree. One by tree, one by tree. Okay, got a triple. Move pretty good, right? Yeah. Trying to be a technician in this motherfucker. Try to get perfect pauses, no butt coming up. That was a good pause. That was a good pause. Hey, hey, maybe you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So I actually have a ton of fucking volume, see that? Today's Friday. I got one top set, one by one, then a one by three, then three by four. My coach ain't fucking around, dude. We ain't fucking around. Three by four. At six. I made a good call. So let me tell you some inner workings in here. Smashed a good weight at RP7. So like confidence is sky high, right? I'm like, I could run through a wall. What's scary and detrimental about that is you might be on tilt, so you're not gonna make good decisions. So I smashed 315, smashed 275. What I really wanted to do was I was like, dude, let's take 265 for three sets of four, which I've never done before in this entire block. But because I feel super confident, it made me want to do that. The problem is if I burn myself out today, I have no more progression for next week when we're only in week two of this three week block. So I had to calm myself down and go, okay, long-term goals, 
we want to peak a little bit next week and right after that we're going to have a deload so with that in mind i'm like is it smart to take 265 when i barely took 245 last week or should i do 255 and set me up for 265 next week so 245 255 265 slight deload and then ramp back up so it took every cell in my body to go calm your ass down motherfucker and i was like fine we won't do anything fun and one term that my coach told me that really resonates he goes people get strong from doing honest volume so being honest with yourself and that really hit me i'm like damn that's true because a lot of times you're trying to like scratch this ego itch or something you know or you're like greed and just do honest volume keep things rp6 rp7 and let the progression come to you rather than you try to reach for the progression that's why it's called overreaching and i'm very proud of myself because usually if i was on sky high i'd be like fuck it motherfucker but i hit 255 just honest volume see coach i'm learning Last set, best set. Now it's time to deadlift. So I gotta make a couple decisions. One, as an athlete trying to get to Worlds, my range is between 440 and 460 today. But I also have to make a decision as a model slash business owner because we have a photo shoot in just two days. So I need to make sure I'm recovered enough for that. So I got to balance the two. That's kind of the hard part of being like full on athlete. And someone that's been uh, breaking this down a lot is Russ Swole. Shout out to him. He said like the minute that he didn't have to fo focus on corrupted anymore and kind of put better on the side, his drive for being a powerlifting athlete went through the roof. And you could just tell his strength is insane. His physique looks, he looks like he's ready to step on an IFBB bro, uh, pro bodybuilding stage. So that is kind of the tough part of trying to run both. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to run both. So got to move this and we'll make a call from there. But I don't want this to jeopardize the shoot. And I also don't want the shoot to jeopardize my progression. So that's something just to keep in mind. <laughs> Yanking is one of my biggest problems. But now it's slowly getting to the point where I can't tell if I'm yanking or not, which is good. Because eventually it'll be so smooth or like, oh, that's not yanking. But there's also different variations of the same right thing. So I'm just trying to see if I'm yanking. But so far, I didn't feel like I am. Like I feel like I am trying to apply pressure to the midfoot, pull against the bar before I initiate. To me, that doesn't look like I'm yanking. But I'll send that to the coach for him to see. All right, I made the decision. What am I gonna do balancing being an athlete, also model business owner? I'm actually gonna undershoot a little bit. So I do feel really, really good today. I feel like I could hit 475 for double or triple at RPE like seven. But we know we got the photo shoot um, in a few days. So what I'm gonna do is kind of undercut it a little bit, still trying to move it as explosively as possible. And what's the reason for that? So that it doesn't affect the shoot 
And if I am under, then that means I'll be that much more recovered to pull bigger on week three, which is my peak week for this block anyways. So I think that's the smartest move where I can, you know, hold a little bit in reserve and then allow me to do what I need to do this weekend. And if I feel fresh, which I should be recovered, if I did hold some in reserve, I can hit a little bit higher on week three. So instead of 465, I'm gonna hit 455. I think I made a good call. Felt like RPE, to be honest, felt like I could have hit like seven more. It felt better and better. Oh, dude. It got better and better. I'm gonna just put it down as five. Cause I could bet my life on five, but if I were to be really honest, and it was meat day and I was 100%, I think that was RP four, three. But anyways, my cap is seven, so that's good. That should probably not even affect me for our photo shoot in two days, which we're dropping. Not this collection, it's already dropped, uh, but the classics collection. Oh yeah, the classics collection. What's dope about that one is, you know, a lot of our designs that put us on the map back in 2013, 2014, like the OG designs, a lot of people have been asking for them. Yo, are you gonna do a, a retro throwback on the old stuff like No Limits, Posse T, Bulletproof T, Certified T, and we are. So stay tuned for that, the BB Classics Collection, and every single one is gonna have a unique custom label to show that it's a throwback. So this might be a one and done thing, we don't know. So far, we're approaching it as if it's gonna be limited edition. So we might not ever drop it again. So make sure you check that out. But that's what the photo shoot is about. We got three by five back offsets. I'm gonna do 425. Moving pretty good. That was way smoother. Way smoother. Also, way more tiring. So I can see why I don't like doing it like that. But it did move better. Dude. Very good. Very, 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 very good. But very tiring at the same time. Last set, best set. Nationals material right there.
So with that exercise, I had to make a couple adjustments. It was supposed to be weighted pull-ups, but as you can see, all the pull-up bars in here are like 12 feet tall. Uh, there is some on the other side, but because of my shoulder, I have to keep it neutral grip or else I'll pull it like my elbows too forward and it'll hurt a lot. So based off the gym I go to, I do have to make some adjustments. So to make it harder, I focus more on the eccentric. So kind of like a tempo going down. So like one, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, one, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. But we got that part done. Now it's time for dumbbell bench. So y'all might be going, hey, the 75s look pretty light for you. Why do you keep it at 75s? And the main purpose for this movement for me, I think for the average person that has a perfect bench, this is probably really good for chest and try and shoulder volume and getting a different variation in. For me, I have a very specific purpose. So I come from the school of powerlifting where you're still thinking about bending the bar, right? Bending the bar as hard as you can, tucking your elbows in. So when I bench, you'll see me tuck my elbows and that's not the proper way to bench anymore. Now, they found out that the strongest leverage is when you stack joints, right? Bar over wrist, wrist over elbow. So you actually wanna bench with your elbows out. And I have a hard time trusting my elbows that way because I power lifted for like straight up seven, eight, nine years tucking my elbows. So when I'm doing the dumbbells, I'm actually trying to reinforce the proper movement, which is why I'm also pausing at the bottom with elbows out to like allow my body to re reprogram the bar path and also allow my body to trust that I can take load in this position that I think is weak, but it's technically the strongest. So that's why I'm focusing a lot on the coming down, pushing the elbows out, pausing, and then coming back up. So this whole top portion of the lift is really easy. I could probably do hundreds, 120s, but I'm really focusing on the bottom because that's the part that will really transfer over to the bench press. So when I come back to Sin City to hit hamstrings, I'm definitely gonna use this machine. Unfortunately, it can't go as heavy as I want to because we got a photo shoot uh, in two days. So I'll get enough just for the stimulation and the volume, but not enough to where it's gonna affect my lifts on Sunday. All right, just finished the bench and deadlift day of the week two of nationals block. So we're already coming into this with a ton of momentum. If you missed the qualifying meet, go check out episode nine. That was the actual meet. And then episode 10, I break down all the things that I learned from that meet and things that I'm gonna apply into the next 11, 12 weeks leading up to nationals in May. So far, as you can see, today's workout, bench went really good, deadlifts went really good. If I can stay injury free and keep this progression, both me and my coach are really excited to see what we're gonna be able to put up on Nationals Day. And also, as I mentioned, the Classics Collector is about to drop any time now. I would say it's probably gonna be either end of March, early April. I forgot, I gotta double check, but stay tuned for that. So a lot of you guys have been excited about any of the retro stuff coming back in 
make sure you uh, enter your email into our website, barbergate.com, so you get all the notifications and you don't miss out. See you guys next time. Peace.